In today's video, we're going to talk about the Canon CRN700 PTZ camera that has auto tracking capabilities. Don't miss this. In today's video, my good friends at Canon have sent me their Canon CRN700 PTZ camera. Now I've got some uh, quick details about it down here on my cheat sheet. It is a 4K camera that can shoot up to 60 frames. It can do 422 10-bit video in HDR. It's got a 15x optical zoom, 20x digital zoom, and we're using a one inch CMOS sensor with dual pixel CMOS autofocus. So this is a absolutely gorgeous camera and uh, I'm so grateful, thank you Canon, for sending this to me to test this out for just a couple of weeks. Now for those of you watching this video at home, they only sent this to me for two weeks time and one of those weeks I'm taking a vacation. So if your questions come in by the time this video is posted, I probably can't test a whole lot with it. But in this video, I just wanted to show you how the autofocus and the tracking works and how I set that all up. So let's dive right in. First and foremost, this camera is connected over ethernet. So it's powered over ethernet. Uh, Canon sent me a switch that has PoE that I could use with this. So there's just one ethernet cable that's running from the back of this camera into the switch. And then I also have an SDI cable that's going into the ATEM just for the purposes of recording and being able to show you this feed right here. So this one that you see right here in this box, that's what's coming out of the camera for right now. I'm also recording ISOs of this, so I will from time to time show that footage on screen so that you can see what the camera sees. Awesome, so let's dive into the computer. Let me show you how I'm getting this all set up because it's a little bit wonky with networking and if you're not as familiar with networking, it can be a bit annoying. So one of the things that I did was this computer is also connected through an ethernet cable to the switch. It's kind of tucked away back here behind our little guy, the little CRN300 PTZ. And that puts both this computer and the camera on the same network. Now for right now, just for testing purposes, I have the computer automatically getting an IP address. I haven't set up any static IP addresses. Again, this is just for being able to show off the camera. Now, when I head over to the computer, you'll be able to see that Canon actually has a software that they use and it's called Camera Search Tool. Originally, it was only for the PC, but thank you, Canon, for putting it out for the Mac as well. And when I open this up, it's actually super quick. Usually right away, it will find the camera. If it doesn't, you can hit this search camera button up top and this will allow you to search for any cameras that are on the network. So as you can see it right here, this camera is coming up with an IP address. And so what I'm going to do is click on this IP address and this will bring up a browser window. Now, once you've gone ahead and actually set up your admin username and password, which is what you typically see the first time that you log into the camera, you'll be taken to a screen that looks just like this. This allows me to see everything that the camera sees and to control all of the settings. So let me walk you through real quick a little bit of what I'm seeing here. So I have an exposure tab and right now it's just on auto, but I could change this over to manual. And then I get a lot more manual controls over things like ISO and gain. Uh, you can switch it between ISO and gain. So if you prefer uh, measurements in ISO numbers just for the sake of matching some other cameras and what you might be used to, uh, you can totally jump between the two of those. Now, I'm going to leave most of this on auto just for right now for the purposes of this video. Uh, there's settings on white balance, so you could manually white balance and say, hey, I'm using 5600 Kelvin lights. Let's, you know, manually dial that in. So, of course, I'd have to change shooting mode back to manual, and then this gives me full control over the Kelvin color temperature. And then I can click and drag this slider to tweak it from there. Focus. Uh, focus mode, autofocus, or manual focus. With autofocus, I can click on the screen and tell it where to focus. So this will allow me to change uh, what it's focusing on. Uh, it does have face detection and tracking. So as my head moves into the frame, you can see that the focus is tracking my face. Now we haven't turned on the auto tracking yet where the camera is actually going to track me around the room. So we'll get to that in just a second. Custom picture profiles. So we can change this between uh, BT709, there's a, a YDR profile, there's more of a normal profile, um, there's a standard profile, and a whole bunch of other custom ones that you could set yourself once you've gone through and really tweaked the settings and gotten this uh, in alignment with your other cameras. 
Under PTZ and IS, uh, we have some controls over the digital zoom. Uh, so you can turn on digital zoom. Of course, I don't typically recommend it because it's going to be doing it digitally. So you're going to see a very noticeable change in the quality of your video. Now, it is a 4K sensor. So if you're in 1080 and you're leveraging that 15X optical zoom, you could theoretically leverage some digital zoom because you have a little bit more juice in the camera if you're not actually using it in 4K. So, you know, you could probably turn it on and, and use a little bit of it, uh, but I typically won't go beyond the optical just because I don't like messing with digital and I don't wanna ruin the quality of my footage. Just know that it's there and if you wanted to push the batteries, you totally could. Preset, uh, so you could set some presets if you wanted to. And again, this is kind of where the uh, control unit, the control surface with the joystick comes in. You can set all your presets there, jump between them. You don't have to get it. And admittedly that control surface is a little bit pricey. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could definitely control this from a computer or a laptop. Uh, that's what I'm doing for today's purposes. So a lot of you are probably wondering how in the world do we get the auto tracking software? Well, uh, Canon has released it for the uh, 700 series cameras, but it is supposed to be coming to the 500 and the 300 later this year. It comes in the form of a software and then it gets installed through this sort of backend uh, browser portal, if you will. So I did some digging around because at first when I hooked this up, I was like, I have no idea, like, do I just flip a switch and it tracks me? Well, what you do is you actually go into the menu system here in the top right corner. And then you go to system. Go to the right system. Um, and then you go to add on. Now it's going to ask me to log in. So I created just an admin and username uh, password login just for the purposes of this camera. But once you're in this section, in the add-on section, you can see that we have the auto tracking application and the auto loop application. So what I'll do is I'll go to auto tracking. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and see how it says startup slash stop. I'm gonna hit startup. And now you can see it says running. It's changed over to running. And then if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see it says add on top page and I'm gonna hit open. Once I open that, we've now entered the auto tracking application. Again, it's just a browser window, so you don't need an actual application installed on the computer to access this. The only application that I had installed was this camera search tool that I used to find the IP address. Now, once we're in here, it's going to go ahead and turn on the auto tracking. You can uh, have it search for a face. So I'm gonna start with it off for right now. I'm going to turn it on and it's looking around for a face. The only problem is it's looking over there. So what I have to do is either get my face into the line of sight of the camera, or I can go ahead and actually jump back to my PTZ control page. And then I can pan this over to find me. And now it believes that there is a face there. There we go. So now you can see it's locked onto my face. I don't know why it thought the uh, the roller behind me was a face, but you can see very clearly it is tracking. And what I think is pretty neat is that this is actually tracking me in a lot of different lighting scenarios, right? With the colored light, the air light behind me, the key light, the fill light. So. It is tracking me quite nicely. We've got some settings here, so I can turn off this silhouette view. Uh, that's just kind of a marker to help you figure out where the person needs to be. But as you can see, even when I turn that off, it still keeps going. Uh, display size. So the display size, um, so when I have my silhouette on, my display size, I can adjust how big of an area I want this to track uh, for the person. And then tracking sensitivity, you get a little bit of control there on sensitivity.
So you can see it's moving a little bit faster when the sensitivity is up to a higher setting. So this is the auto tracking application. Um, it's pretty darn easy to use. I haven't really mastered all of it yet. So, you know, this is just to kind of show you a quick overview of what it's going to look like when you get it. Uh, this has been just day one of me using it. But let me go ahead and walk around the room a little bit more and just have it track me as I go out of the light into the dark. And, uh, and then we will go ahead and jump back into the video here. So as you can see, it does a pretty darn good job of tracking me. I'm impressed I was kind of going out of the light, behind light stands and C stands, into the dark, back into the light again. Some lens flares and things got in the way. Uh, there was one time where it lost me just a little bit, so you know it'll be interesting to kind of see how that plays out in future iterations of this as they update it as it gets better. But I will say in most scenarios, you're probably going to use this with someone walking a stage not someone that's walking in a small office room like this where I'm going in and out of the light. But for someone that's walking across the stage, I think that this could be a very unique option, especially for the guys that want to be able to have a camera that can track a speaker across the stage for hours on end. And, you know, if you're watching the switcher, if it, you know, goes off of a person, you can always cut away and have your cutaway shot but you don't have to sit there with your hand cramping up, running a PTZ back and forth all day. I know I've done that before and it is not fun. So this is a very exciting piece of software and update from Canon. As you can see, this is the CRN700. So this is one of their larger PTZ cameras in comparison. Um, we've got the 300 and I'll put this next to it here so you can kind of see it's about double the size. Uh, and so, this camera comes in at $10,000, just under $10,000. And if you're interested in it, I will go ahead and leave a link below this video so that you can purchase one of these cameras. Overall, I'm very impressed. I think that the quality when given a very well-lit scenario, like a stage, a theater, a conference, is going to play very well with these cameras. Uh, as far as you know, that depth of field look that you might be looking for, I don't know that you're going to get that as much, but I still feel that the quality of this uh, can really tie in well with some of Canon's cinema cameras, uh, some of their camcorders like the XA55 that I have. I think it's been updated to be the 75. It has a one inch sensor, 4K sensor, probably the same sensor that's in this or close to it. So I think that, you know, this will play nicely with a lot of the other Canon cameras and could be a good addition to your setup. So that is all for kind of the quick overview of the auto tracking software. You can see it's still going on me. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, if you wanna see more stuff like this, please do me a quick favor, hit that like and subscribe button below this video and I will be seeing you very soon.